Should I say good morning? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's Thursday, so welcome everybody in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord to worship Him and thank Him for His love, for His mercy, for everything that He does for us, and most importantly, the salvation that He did for us on the cross. Um, today is Monday, Thursday, and we follow the order of service which has been printed for this occasion, or we follow it on the monitor. Uh, as I said, we celebrate Monday, Thursday. And Monday means command. On Thursday, a day before Jesus' crucifixion, he gave his disciples his body and blood together with the bread and wine for the forgiveness of their sins. This evening, we focus on the meal and communion as a way to commemorate this day. Something to tell you before we begin with our service is that at the end of the service, after the prayer of thanksgiving, uh, Mr. Nelson will blow out the candles, and then after that, when he does that, I will start reading Psalm 22 in order for everybody uh, will help the stripping of the altar. So all those who are able to help, men and women can do it, so and we can do it. So. so let us begin our worship service this evening, singing our opening hymn, O Lord, we praise Thee. Thank you. 
Please rise. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God to my, my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. His plenty of redemption and the forgiveness of all our sins. Let us then confess our sins unto and unto our gracious Lord, you may kneel to confess our sins to God, to those who are able to do it. We all speak. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We have turned away from one another in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid, and have not done the good you demand. We do repent, and are truly sorry for our deeds, our sins. Have mercy on us, kind Father, because of the obedience of our brother, Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us for all that is past, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, Move us to serve you faithfully. Set our feet upon the new path of life and build your kingdom here through Jesus Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God has pro promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and turn to him. In his stead and by his command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God keep you in His grace by the Holy Spirit, lead you to greater faith and obedience, and bring you to live with Him forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may rise, we continue with hymn 624.
remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us hear God's word. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The Lord promises a new covenant. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Psalms 116, and we are going to speak it. Pastor, congregations, number one is for women and number two for men. What should I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maid servant. You have, you have lost my bounds. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. In the, in the courts, courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. The epistle reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 15 to 25. Jesus is our great high priest. The Holy Spirit also bears witness to us. For after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them, after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my laws on their hearts and write them on their minds. Then he adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of this, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. And since we have great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Christ entered once for all into the holy places by means of his own blood, 
the secured and eternal redemption. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Please rise. The Lord's Supper is instituted by Jesus. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters, and tell the master of the house. The teacher says to you, Where is that guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourself. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after they have eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our Christian faith, speaking the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the sermon hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends in Christ, all three of the readings for today points to one thing, a new covenant. A new covenant to replace the old covenant. Not that the old covenant did not work. It was fine. It was given by God and all that God gives is good. So it was fine. We were the problems. We could not keep it. God said through the prophet Jeremiah, it was my covenant that they broke. So the old covenant was broken. Fixing was not going to work. It needed replacing. God did not need a new covenant. We needed a new covenant. Which was no surprise to God. It was not that the old covenant was plan A. And then, when that did not work out, God switched to plan B. Actually, if we are going to talk that way, it was really the other way around. The new covenant was always plan A. Holy scriptures tell us that Jesus was foreknown and chosen before the foundation of the world. 1 Peter chapter 1. God knew. He knew what he would do. And so in time, from the moment of the very first sin that came into our world and plunged us into the darkness of sin, death and separation from God, Jesus was plan A to put things right again. The Father could have sent his Son into the world right then and there and not waited. That is what Eve was expecting, at least. When Cain was born, she said, I have gotten a man, the Lord. God had promised a Savior would be born from her. And so the first son that came, she expected a Savior. That's faith. Faith in the words and promises of God. But not yet, Eve. It had to be at the fullness of time, and that was not it. God is not big into answering our, our why questions. Have you seen that? We always say, why God this, why God this and that. He's not going to answer you. So he does not tell Eve or us why that was not the time. It just was not. He tells us instead to have faith. Not to worry about the why, but to believe that he will deliver all his promise and he knows what he is doing. We hear later that when he did send his son, when Jesus was born, it was just the right time. It's what Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 says, which means that until then, it was not the right time. Not yet. And so until it was, God established the old covenant. It was never meant to last forever. It was never meant to be his final word. The final word is Jesus. The old covenant was temporary. It was for a time only, as the apostle Paul explains in Galatians. It was put in place only until Jesus will come. Galatians chapter 3. It was put there. In fact, to serve him to point to him 
And who is that him? Jesus Christ. To foreshadow him. To keep his people until he would come. It was a guardian, as Paul says in Galatians chapter 3. And so the Lord called the prophet Jeremiah to point the people forward. Things were not going too well for them. But the days are coming, he said, when God will act. A new covenant is coming, unlike the old one, which they broke. So what would this new covenant be that we would be unable to break? It would be an entirely one-sided covenant. It would all be done by God. And if all done by Him, by God, then done perfectly and unbreakable. It would not depend on sinful human priest, but a perfect heavenly priest. It would not be the blood of animals, but the blood of God. It would not be over time after time, but once and for all, after this sacrifice, there is no longer any offering for sin. For no more would be needed. No more need to be done. And it would not forgive some sins, but all sins, every single one, from the least to the greatest, from the beginning of time to the end of time. It would be done by Jesus. And for all. And then it would be finished. Complete. So on the night. When he was betrayed. When Jesus took the cup. And told his disciples. This cup that is poured out for you. Is the new covenant in my blood. The moment was there. God was now doing. What he had planned all along. From the very beginning, a covenant only he could do his work as author and finisher. A covenant only he would do. A covenant that he would do alone. Therefore, a testament, as Luther translated the, the word. Something one does alone and puts it into place. And then when the maker dies, it is simple received by the heirs. So my dear friends in Christ, now the time is at hand. It is full and right. The time has come for Jesus to die and put into effect his testament or covenant. To offer himself as the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. This is the day God has planned all along, and now it was coming to pass. A new covenant, not like the old. A new covenant that cannot be broken and that will last forever. A new covenant where God will forgive their iniquity and remember their sins no more. For in Jesus, all our sins will be forgiven, gone, washed out. But not only the what, but also the how has now changed for us. The reading from Hebrews said, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh. Friends in Christ, now that may not have sounded strange to you, but to those who first heard those words, there was something in there that would have stopped them in their tracks. Holy places, plural, is what the reading of Hebrews is saying. To enter the holy places, plural. That was not right. Huh? That could not be right. There was only one holy place. Only one place where offerings and sacrifices 
could be made. One temple, one ark, one altar, one place God has promised to be and commanded this all to take place. And that was in Jerusalem. For the old covenant, you have to go there. No exceptions. But now, Hebrews tell us in the new covenant, it is different. There is not just one holy place, but many holy places. For in this new covenant, we do not go to the holy place. Now, the holy place comes to us. It is wherever Christ is, and whenever his words are spoken, and the once and for all sacrifice is given to us, that is the holy place. And so there is not one, but, not, but now many holy places where the lamp of God given for us is given to us. The lamp of God which makes the place holy. The lamp of God that makes us holy with the forgiveness of our sins. The lamp of God whose body and blood are given to us to eat and to drink. This is the new covenant done by him, now given to you. All Jesus do it as the author and finisher, a covenant that cannot be broken. So, what do we do? What do we do? We believe it. We receive it and we live in it. We now, as we heard in Hebrews, live in love and good works. We do not do the covenant. We do not do anything in it. We do not make a decision, pray a prayer, offer sacrifices, or do anything else for the forgiveness of our sins. That's done. Once and for all, done, finished, completed by Jesus, only by Jesus. It is done by the Lord Jesus Christ for us. Tonight, it's not just about bread and wine being changed. It is about you, you being changed by this gift. That having received this gift, the fullness and completeness of these promises of the new covenant, this is where we live. We live as those washed clean of the filth of, the filth of our sins. We live as those who have received the body and blood of Christ. We live as those who have participated in the Passover, for in Christ, in truth, we have passed over from death to life. When Adam sinned, he passed over from life to death. Now Jesus has reversed that. The new covenant declares that and delivers that fully and completely, just as the Lord God has promised. So on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus said to his disciples, take and eat, take and drink. This is the new covenant in my blood. The new covenant that fulfills and does away with the old. Jesus does not work the new covenant. He is the new covenant. The new covenant that forgives sins and remembers iniquity no more. The new covenant which cannot be broken because Jesus cannot be broken. And so Jesus says to you, take and eat, take and drink, that you too receive the new covenant, that you too receive the love of God given for you, that you too be heirs of his testament and inheritors of his life, new life, everlasting life. And so we will receive him this night fully and completely, not an image, 
or a representation, a virtual Jesus, but the real, full, complete Jesus, the author and finisher, body and blood. We receive Jesus, all that he is, all that he does, and all that he has, all that gives, forgiveness and life. As we do so, we do so now in the context of this Holy Week, when we remember the fulfilling of God's promise, when the Lamb goes to the altar of the cross, when our great high priest offers himself with the sin of the whole world upon him and only upon him, all this for you and for me. Jesus for us. Not plan B, but plan A. This is the new covenant, what God has planned all along. So come and receive it, my dear friends in Christ. Come and receive him, and go live in the confidence that what Jesus has done cannot be broken. Yes, your sins are forgiven, and now you have peace with God. Amen. As we continue singing our offering hymn. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church throughout the, the world, and for all who confess the name of Christ, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation, its mission, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit in the bonds of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who partake this day of Christ's holy body and blood, that in their eating and drinking they may receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins and the renewal of life, and have a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all of us gathered here in worship, that the blessings of this service be shown forth in our lives as we live in peaceful service to one another and in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. And grant, grant us your peace. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the strength and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace and with great joy. Amen. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the world of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, and you, our fathers, trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, the strong bulls of Basham surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks 
to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me. They have cursed my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. And stand in awe of him. All you offspring of Israel, for he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. And he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. Posterity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. <laughs> 